odds are your perspective might be a little bit screwed up from the last lesson because you're moving around and looking at different things. So in order to reset our perspective back to the default, we'll just create a new Blender file. In order to do this, we'll just click File in the upper left, and from the New section, we'll select General. And just like that, we're back to our default. Now while you were moving around and looking around in the 3D viewport, odds are you noticed a few different things floating around. We have this cube here in the center, we have this dot up here in the upper right, and we have this weird pyramid-shaped object over here on our left. All three of these things are called objects, and in fact, objects are what create our scene in Blender. Now you may remember me mentioning objects earlier, especially when we talked about the outliner, where I mentioned that the outliner is a list of objects sorted into these folders called collections. And in fact, we can actually see our three different objects here. We have our camera, which is this pyramid-shaped object over here. We have our cube, or our mesh, which is, well, this cube in the center of our scene here. And finally, we have the light, which is this tiny little dot up here. Conveniently, the three default objects that we have in our Blender scene here are what I like to call the three key objects. I call them key objects because you need one of each to really make a render. Now, there is no software rule that says you have to have a camera, a mesh, and a lamp, but if you don't have light in a scene, you're not going to be able to see anything. If you don't have anything for the light to bounce off of, well, you're just going to see a big empty void, and if you don't have a camera, well, you can't take a picture without a camera. So I like to imagine that you need these three things in order to make any render. Now if you look closely, you may notice that our cube, well I guess you don't have to look too closely, but our cube has this glowing orange outline around it. This glowing orange outline means that our cube is currently selected. It is our selected object. If we want to select a different object, all we need to do is move our mouse over the object we want to select and left click. That is, if you chose the left click default when we went over those initial preferences when we first opened Blender. So now, if I wanted to select my camera, all I need to do is move my mouse over it and left click to select it. So go ahead and give this a shot yourself. Try selecting different objects in your scene by left clicking them or right clicking them if you chose that default. In addition to selecting one object at a time, we can actually select multiple objects. In order to select multiple objects, all we need to do is hold the shift key when we select them. So if I want to select this cube in addition to my camera, I'll hold shift and left click it. Then if I want to select the light, I can hold shift and left click it. And just like that, we now have all three of our objects selected. You may notice that this light is currently glowing a slightly different color than the other two objects in our scene. These are a darker orange, while this is a more of a yellow orange. This is because our light is our active object. Currently, this doesn't really matter too much for us, but as you become more experienced with Blender, the active object is usually the object that you'll be completing some sort of operation on or mapping some sort of operation to. But you'll figure that out more as you get further into Blender. Now here's a neat trick. Right now I have all the objects in my scene selected. What if I didn't want anything selected at all? Well, all we need to do is double tap the A key. So if I press AA in rapid succession, you'll notice that everything becomes deselected. Or if I wanted to select everything, I could simply press A. So we use AA to deselect and A to select. Go ahead and give this a shot now, along with the selecting in groups by holding shift and left clicking. Now I'm gonna go ahead and deselect everything here by double tapping the A key, so AA. And now I'm gonna show you another way that you can select objects that doesn't involve the 3D viewport. And this is up in our outliner up here. If I wanted to select our camera, all I need to do is click on the camera and you'll notice that our camera becomes selected. Or perhaps I want to select our cube or our light. Or if I want to select multiple, I can hold the shift key and select multiple. So there you have it. Now you know what objects are and how to select them, whether you're in the 3D viewport or up in the outliner. So now that we have a basic understanding of objects in Blender, and we know one simple way to interact with them via selection, let's talk about transformations. The word transformation has a lot of different meanings across many different fields. 
So let me explain to you what it means in the context of Blender and other similar 3D softwares. A transformation in Blender is when we modify an object in 3D space. This can include modifying its position, its orientation, or its scale. So let's start by talking about the three different types of transformations that we can apply to our objects in Blender. The first being a translation. A translation is simply when we have an object and we change its position. It's nothing too fancy, but it is our first transformation. Next, our second transformation is a rotation. A rotation is when we change our object's orientation. Just like this, we can now spin this cube in different directions, and when it lands in a different direction, we will have rotated it by so many degrees. And finally, our third transformation is a scale. Right now, this cube is pretty small, but if I wanted something a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, I could choose that as well. So there we have it, our three different transformations, our translation, changing position, our rotation, changing orientation, and our scale, changing the size of the object. And with these three transformations, we can position objects in any position that we want in our 3D scene. So let's go ahead and dive into Blender and learn how to do these by ourselves. So it turns out that there are actually two different ways that we can perform transformations in Blender 2.8. The first way is a visual method that uses Blender's 3D user interface, which is super intuitive and easy for beginner users to get into. The second way is hotkey based, which is significantly less intuitive, but it is so much faster, especially when you get into more complicated projects, because all you have to do is tap a key. Now, we decided to split this topic up into two separate videos, but I strongly recommend that you watch both methods, that way you can decide which workflow works best for you, depending on your project. That way you aren't stuck with a one-sided approach that's going to slow you down, or another sided approach that just doesn't work as well for you. So let's go ahead and get started first by talking about visual transformations, and then we'll talk about the hotkey based transformations in the next video. Now before we move anything around, let's first make sure that we have an object selected that we want to transform. In this case, this cube is currently selected, so we're going to be transforming this cube. Now, in order to perform a translation, all we need to do is come up here into the upper left to our tool panel. And if for any reason this tool panel isn't here, all you need to do is press the T key to show and hide it. Or you can also just click this little arrow, but the T key is a lot faster for me. Anyway, this little icon right here with the four arrows pointing in opposite directions is our move tool. And you can see that if I hold my mouse over it. If I click on the move tool, you'll notice that these arrows appear around our cube. These arrows are actually called gizmos, which really isn't important, but I will be referring to them as that. So it might be good to know for that. Now here's the interesting thing. If we move our mouse over one of these arrows and click and drag, we can move that object along that axis. So in this case, I'm currently moving this cube across the red or X axis. Additionally, I can move it across the Y axis or the Z axis. Additionally, on top of moving it across single axes like this, we can also just move it freeform. And all we need to do in order to do that is click on this little white ring surrounding the origin of the object here. And by doing so, we can just move it wherever we want, according to the plane of view that we're currently looking at the object from. Perfect, so go ahead and give this a shot yourself. Go ahead and try and move your cube around using these visual gizmos. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo all those things that I just did, even though they were very minor, I still like to start fresh with every single one of these transformations. So I'm just going to press Control Z until our cube is back to the origin. All right, so now our next transformation is a rotation. And you may have guessed it, the rotation tool is right below the move tool over here in our tool panel. As you can see here, we have our rotate tool. And if I click on that, you'll notice that our gizmos change a little bit. Instead of having arrows, we now have arcs. And if we click and drag on any of these arcs, you'll notice that we can rotate it along that axis. So here I'm rotating across the Y axis or the Z axis. Additionally, we also have this white outline, 
which is going to rotate our object in accordance to the plane of view that we're currently looking at it from. So if I click and drag here, you'll notice it rotates around the axis that our perspective is looking at the cube from. If I change to look at it from over here, we can rotate around this axis. Now on top of those, there is actually another kind of hidden way of rotating our cube called a trackball rotation. And I say it's hidden not because it's really hidden, it's just kind of hard to see. So if I move my mouse over our kind of the center area inside of the sphere created by these gizmos here, you'll notice that I get this kind of little flickering effect. And if I click and drag in this area, we can perform a trackball rotation which it's kind of, it's really hard to explain, but it's more of a freeform rotation where we can rotate it in any direction that we want uh, with little regard to axis or perspective. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead and undo all those changes I just made so we have a nice fresh cube to start with uh, and go ahead and try to perform these rotations yourself. Simply click the rotate tool over here, make sure you have your cube selected and then you're good to go. All right, and now our final transformation is our scale. And the scale looks pretty similar to how our move gizmos looked, and you can probably guess it does pretty much the same exact thing. If we click and drag on this blue block, we can scale along the z-axis. If we click and drag on this green block, we can scale along the y-axis. And if we click and drag along this red block, we can scale along the x-axis. Additionally, we can also just click on this huge white circle on the outside here and we can scale the entire thing uniformly and the same goes for the little inside circle here which is a little bit weird I'm not sure exactly why they have uh, two different uh, ways to do this but either way it works out just fine so we can scale along multiple axes or just one at a time perfect so go ahead and give this a shot yourself once again simply switch over to the scale tool and try scaling your object a little bit so here's an interesting extra tidbit of information. A lot of Blender users find it annoying to have to switch between the move, rotate, and scale gizmos all the time, which is why the Blender developers actually went ahead and they included a transform gizmo. And the transform gizmo takes all of the gizmos and just packs them into one big mess, which can be a little bit chaotic, but you do get the ability to alter any single transformation you want to real easily. So you can see I can perform a translation, a rotation, another rotation, we can scale along the y-axis and then along the x-axis, and then we can move everything over here. Just like that without having to change the gizmos once. So some of you might prefer this, uh, but it's really up to you. You are the user, you get to decide how you want to use the software. So anyway, that about wraps things up for visual transformations. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do these same exact things but with the power and efficiency of hotkeys instead. So now that you understand the foundations of transformations and we know how to do them visually using gizmos in Blender's 3D viewport, let's go ahead and talk about how we can perform these same transformations in Blender using hotkeys. Now traditionally, using hotkeys isn't something you do until you're more experienced with the software. But with Blender, there are lots of useful hotkeys, and they can accelerate your workflow tenfold. So we like to teach them early on, that way you guys can get a head start in learning your hotkeys. So when it comes down to our three transformations, we have three respective hotkeys to go along with it. We have G for translation. I like to think of this as G for grab because it makes a lot more sense that way. We have R for rotation, and finally we have S for scale. So now let's go ahead and try these out in Blender. So I went ahead and loaded up a nice fresh Blender file for us to work with here. You're welcome to do the same if your project's looking a little bit messy, but you're not obligated to do so by any means. Just make sure that you do switch back to our selection tool in the upper left here, that way our transform gizmos are gone from our 3D viewport. So let's go ahead and get started with our hotkey transformations. Our first transformation is a translation, and we can perform a translation using the G key. So if I press G with my cube selected, I can move it wherever I want in my 3D viewport. And once I'm ready to place it somewhere, say up here, I simply left click. And just like that, we've transformed or translated our cube in this direction. Now I'm gonna go ahead and undo that by pressing Control Z. And now I'm going to perform a rotation. 
Our rotation is pretty simple as well. All we need to do is press the R key and we can rotate our cube around from whatever direction we're looking at it from. Additionally, once we've pressed the R key, we can also press the R key again to get that same freeform rotation that I mentioned earlier, although it's really kind of wonky right now because of the angle I'm looking at this cube from. Once again, I'm going to press Control Z. So just as a refresher, that's R to rotate and double R to do that freeform rotation that I just showed you there. The trackball rotation is what it's called. And then finally, we have our scale. And all we need to do to scale is press the S key and then move our mouse in and out from the origin of the object. So we can make it big or small. And then once we're ready, all we need to do is click. And just like that, we've scaled our object uniformly across all three of its axes. So go ahead and give this a shot yourself. Use the G, R, and S keys to grab, rotate, and scale your cube. So great, we're now able to translate, rotate, and scale our objects in Blender uniformly. But in the last lesson, you might remember that we were able to do all of these transformations across a single axis. We were either able to translate our cube along the Y axis, rotate it along the X axis, or scale it along the Z axis. So how do you do this with hotkeys? Well, you might find that this is actually relatively simple and pretty intuitive to do. All we need to do is click one of our transformation hotkeys, whether that be G, R, or S, and then follow it up with the axis that we want to move along. So we press the X, Y, or Z key. And just like that, we can scale along the X axis or translate along the Y axis or even rotate around the X axis. So let's go ahead and get some practice in with this. That way we're more familiar with how it works. I'll start by performing a translation along one axis. In this case, I'm going to try and move my cube here along the red or X axis. So in order to do that, I'm first going to press my transformation hotkey, which is G. And you'll notice that by doing so, I can move my cube around. But then I'm going to press the X key. And by pressing X, you'll notice it automatically snaps to our X axis and we can move our cube exclusively across our X axis. So I'll move it over here and then say I wanted to move it across my Y axis. So I'll press and release the G key and we can see that we've picked up our cube and now I'll press the Y key to move it along the Y axis. So let's go ahead and try this with some other things. I'll go ahead and undo those last two operations and we'll try rotating it along the X axis. So we'll press R to rotate and then we'll press X to snap it to the X axis. Or if we wanted to, before we even click out of this, we could also just press the Y hotkey and it'll snap to that instead. That way, if we choose the wrong axis, we can switch without having to worry about messing anything up. So I'll rotate it. And then while we're at it, why not scale it along the Z axis? So I'll press S to scale, followed by Z to scale it along exclusively the Z axis. And just like that, we can scale our cube rotate our cube, and translate our cube along any axis that we wish.